And now it's time for Fabulous Film and Friends. This week on Fabulous Film and Friends, it's the moment all y'all cowpokes been waiting for. We're biting the bullet and comparing the two star-studded gunfight at the OK Corral epics, pitting 1993's Tombstone, directed by George Pan Cosmatos, starring Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, wait, Sam Elliott, Bill Paxton, <laughs> Powers Booth, Michael Bean, Stephen Lang, Dana Delaney, Dana Wheeler Nicholson, Joanna Pacula, Michael Rooker, Thomas Hayden Church, Jason Priestley, Billy Zane, Billy Bob Thornton, Charlton Heston, and Robert Mitchum against 1994's Wyatt Earp, directed by Lawrence Kasdan and starring Kevin Costner, Dennis Quaid, Michael Madsen, Tom Sizemore, Bill Pullman, Linda Nashby, David Andrews, Isabella La Rosalini, Mayor Winningham, Joe Beth Williams, Catherine O'Hara, Allison Elliott, Annabeth Gish, Joanna Going, Mark Harmon, Jeff Fahey, Lewis Smith, Adam Baldwin, Martin Cove, Jim Caviezel, Taya Leone, Betty Buckley, and Gene Hackman. I'm your host, Gino Caputi, <laughs> and commensurate with the star-studded cast, I have quite a lineup of hired guns on this edition, starting with my kid sis and prairie loving Roseanne Caputi, the sons of Eastern Oregon and Northern Utah, Burton Brown and David Johnson, DMD, Texas Joe Field, by way of Orinda, California, and the root and tootinest actor photography this side of the Columbia River, Gordon Alex Robertson. Okay, Alex, give us your best Val Kilmer's Doc Holliday cutting down an ignorant boorish card sharp. <laughs> well, actually, actually, wait, well. wait, 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 well, give us pretty. both. No, give us oh both versions. God. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank Stillwell, if you didn't trust my <laughs> abilities at playing fish, I may have to go off and defile myself, <laughs> and defile myself in ways that <laughs> only the Lord could imagine. And until the bullet finds my heart, I will continue to defile myself. Pretty go good. Fish. Well done. That was good. Oh, well, I'd wing it there. I'm sorry. Good, Dennis Quaid. Yeah. All right, not bad, not bad. Yeah. All right, before we throw down and draw the synopses, Tombstone finds retired lawman Wyatt Earp and his brothers Virgil and Morgan, along with their wives, settling in the Arizona mining town of Tombstone to seek their fortunes. Their plans go awry when Curly Bill Brocious, Ike and Bill Clanton, and the rest of the cowboy gang start making a trouble and allegedly kill the Tombstone Marshal Fred White. The Earp brothers don the stars and are sworn in once again to face off with the members of the gang at the legendary OK Corral. Wyatt Earp basically tells the same story, except with much more backstory detail and some might argue a lot more padding. Which is the best? We're about to find out. Okay. So, around the room, okay, we have an hour. I have an hour left on this podcast cycle. So this is going to be an hour-long wow. podcast. And so it's all lightning quick, yes or no, true or false questions on this baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so going around the room, starting with you, Alex, which is the better film? Go. Wyatt Earp. Roseanne. Tombstone. David Johnson. Tombstone. Burton Brown. Wider. Joe Field. Tombstone. And here I am with the tie maker, Wider. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, right. right through. Uh, why, Dad? Why, Alex? Why is Wider better? Go. Um, well, because it's a much more cohesive story than Tombstone. Uh, as long as it is, as long as you engage in, in the story, uh, I, I don't know. I just find it to have so much more depth and, and, and more focus. Uh, Tombstone, I still enjoy. I mean, there are elements of Tombstone. There are moments of Tombstone. But the more you watch it, the more you really feel like it is a disjointed movie. There's a lot of uh, feels like missing scenes, which is quite possible when you know about the background of the, the, the movie. Well, and there's I no think... missing scenes in White Earp. No, there's not. No, there's not. None whatsoever. And, and interestingly enough, both movies still don't go into depth on Wyatt Earp. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I got to give the nod to Wyatt Earp. And Roseanne. I, 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 you know, oh, anyway. oh no, there, uh, Roseanne, why? Why is Tombstone better? 
Uh, Tombstone is like watching a high school basketball game where you know all the players and it's like, hey, it's the seniors that I love. And if they're slower playing, they bounce the basketballs off their feet and get it to the other team, all things like that, except I care more in the end about everyone playing that game as opposed to Wyatt Earp feels like an NBA game, like a low scoring NBA game in April between like the Brooklyn Nets and the New Orleans Pelicans, where it's just like, obviously it's a classier game and it's going faster, but I just don't give a shit. Hmm. Burton, why do you like Tombstone better? Well, I think there was more story to it. Uh, I like them both. I'm fine. I, I own them both. The, um, the Wyatt Earp one is an old DVD where you have to stand up and turn it, you know, turn the DVD over to the other side <laughs> three times, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. like four discs. <laughs> yeah, well, it was one disc, but, but still, it was good, and it and it, you know, it kept my I hadn't watched it in forever, um, and it. I sat down and watched all three hours of it. Didn't fall asleep. It kept my attention the whole time. And, and uh, it, yeah, it was a lot of character development, but, but I liked it. Um, you know, we'll get into more details, I'm sure, later. But Maybe um, not. This might, but be, I the like this it. might be the but tombstone I like of tombstone. Fred and Swim and Friends. Yeah, yeah. It's just an abridged version. A tombstone's an abridged version. I mean, only focuses <laughs> on the end. You know, An abridged yeah. version Tombstone. of a lie. <laughs> yeah. anyway. Well, I'm not sure that any of it was true, but it was interesting. Right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go. Joe, what do you got? Yeah, so I preferred Tombstone. I felt like <clears throat> compared, comparing both of them, actually it felt like it had more focus than Wyatt Earp. Um, Wyatt Earp it felt like it could have been edited down quite a bit. Um it starts off, I mean, I think Tombstone, the way it starts is, like, comparatively, it's almost like they ask the question, why bother with exposition? Like, let's just throw these people in there, and you're going to expect, okay, here's Wyatt Earp, here's his brothers, oh, hey, look, here's Doc Holliday. Cool. And they already know each other. We don't need to establish anything beyond that. And it, it felt like where Wyatt Earp should have started to begin with. I agree. Um, and I think that's kind of why I preferred it. Is like if you could have cut up the first forty minutes of Wyatt Earp, you would have almost had Tombstone. If you had also added in some classic action movie hero tropes to it as well, I can accept that. David Johnson. So I like Tombstone because I love Western mythology, and I think the characters in Tombstone. The guy who plays Doc Holliday, and as a dentist, he, you know he's my roots. But Val <laughs> Kilmer, Val Kilmer, Val Kilmer's rendition of Doc Holliday was more entertaining, and I like Kurt Russell better than Kevin Costner. I, and who doesn't love Sam Elliott? I mean, it's Virgil. So, and Charlton Heston to throw it in there. I I just think Tombstone, just it's Western myth and with some history, and it just adds to the allure of the Western United States. But. Okay, well, I'm going to weigh in. Uh, uh, so I, I saw, in 94, I saw uh, Tombstone in, at the Rex, the Rex Theater, and I thought it was disjointed but exciting. Like, I thought it had a, like, I knew there was some trouble with the film. And just so you know, um, Kevin Costner was originally slated to star as Wyatt Earp in Tombstone and then didn't like the way it went, so he just went off and made his own movie. And then... Um, I saw Wyatt Earp in 94 when it came out and hated it. Just thought it was the most boring movie I'd ever seen in my life. And then I didn't think about it until we had this podcast. We watched Horizon, which I wish both you Utah denizens had been part of that podcast. Because I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I loved Horizon. So Alex and I loved it. Roseanne didn't like it. But anyway, I've, we sort of got on this Kevin Costner kick. And then I bought the sound. Like, I was thinking... I wonder what it's James Newton Howard because we hated the score to Horizon. So I was like, I was like, what did the James Newton Howard Kevin Costner collaboration sound like? The music. So I listened to the score in its entirety. And I went, this is a great score. This is a much much better score than I remembered. 
and then watch the movie. And since I the score was playing in my head, I realized, okay, it's a lyrical score. It's a more lyrical movie. It's a more polished movie. Yes, it still should be cut down by an hour. There's no reason for that movie to be three hours. But it's just, I got a better sense of the the, the Earp brothers. The I mean, yeah, I like the fact that we established them as post-Civil War meeting up. Gene Hackman's the dad, giving him the shoot to kill, hit to kill, and the idea of blood stronger than not, ain't nothing stronger than blood. Got it. So then I, I like the theme. I like, I think it's just a more cohesive movie. It's a more lyrical movie. Is it a more tedious movie? Yeah, but seeing Tombstone again, I just, I just, I can't stand Daniel Delaney. I can't stand most of the subplots. The only thing good about it, in my opinion now, is Doc Holliday and Michael Bean. Those two are like stick out as like okay these guys, these, this makes the movie interesting. The rest is just things are just happening, and I don't feel any sense of co- cohesion or connection to the Erps's brothers or the plot as a, as a whole. Like I'm like, what is this about? What's this story about? Well, I think that's a good question because honestly, Dave, you were zoning in on my brainwaves because I was thinking about the idea of Western mythology and the idea of the Eastern side of the United States has ghost stories and we have myths, right? And so I just think, and we get to participate more in these myths. And yet, what is the myth of Wyatt Earp? Is it, and I think, okay, something that's integral to Americans is how do you have, how do you tame lawlessness while remaining free? And, and I think that's this huge question always. But I just think Wyatt Earp is not the guy to ask these questions. It always, neither of these stories, I think, I think both are about that, but Wyatt Earp is not, what is it saying about it? Is it saying, yes, law and order is the way to go? Or is it saying, yes, this is the only way to be free is to abide by the law? The only way to be free, I mean, what questions are either of these films asking? I Which think is why that's, I'm only that picking is one. the issue. That is the issue. Because you cannot, Do you ha- think- because they, they, oh, Ultimately, the Clantons and Curly Bill and all those guys are taking it too far. Because the one thing Wyatt Earp does fail, just just like Tombstone does, and Tombstone was definitely cut out because we have a scene where Stephen Lang is screaming at, at Sam Elliott and calling him a pimp. And just for context, everybody, the Earp brothers were pimps, mm-hmm. including Wyatt. <laughs> they were pimps. Yeah. So they <laughs> should have included that in one of these movies. Now, obviously, it was well- cut out of Tombstone. But yeah. that is the question. So here are these lawmen who are criminals. And so the idea is the Clantons and Johnny Ringo and everybody, they take it too far. They're part of a gang that are, are rustling and killing people. And they've, they've taken it one step too far, forcing the Earp brothers to don the stars and swear in and fight, which I think is a fine theme. But I don't think either movie's exceedingly successful. I don't find it, them compelling representatives of that theme. I think, I think they're much Earp more compelling. I, think I feel Wyatt like they're Earp compelling representatives of the West is a place where you can define who you are at any given time. That's the story both these films should be telling, and neither of them are telling that. I think they're telling that story, but they they lose sight. I think they, well, the blood or, blood is thicker than water theme is at least cogent in Wyatt Earp. I think it's. Co- I mean, it, that's it's such not, a basic it's ass not, theme. But it's not part of. It's not part of Tombstone. You barely get a sense of their brotherhood. What about? Uh, that's not true. You get a lot of them walking. There's a, both these films have a lot of walking, and I feel like there's a lot of walking with brothers, and I feel like it's established. What about Kurt Russell's amazing acting job when he has Morgan's blood on his hands and he's screaming in the street? <laughs> More not one of Kurt Russell's <laughs> baddest performances. I'm sorry. We lo- we this show is a friend and to we Kurt all love Russell. Kurt, yes. This yes, is a yes. the show we are it definitely is, Kurt Russell is. friendly territory. I have called not him a national be- treasure. No, on this show. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible scene. <laughs> I think you get a sense of both. As far as it goes, you get the sense of brotherhood in both films. I'm sure it's a writer I, I, think it's, I think it's I think it's stronger. All right, let's go around the room. Yeah, Alex, yeah, yeah. Stronger yes. Sense of Brotherhood. Which film? Wyatt Earp. Dave, Brotherhood. Party line, Alex. I, you know, I, I'm <laughs> fighting words. I mean, I, I'm I, calling I think you, you out. I think 
Wyatt Earp has a you know more of a backstory about their brothers. I, I, but... I don't care. Did you? I feel like him, Madsen, and the other guy, uh, Jordan Ashby or Lyndon Ashby. I think they seem like actual brothers versus just good actors. Uh, I mean, I I sense it in both, to be honest. And hmm. so, yeah. I don't know. Bill Paxton's kind of in "Whoa, golly!" kind of territory. He's out to lunch in that film. I don't think he fits. I'd have preferred Michael Bean as one of the brothers. Well, I can't stand Tom Sizemore, so there you go. You well, know, I, but he's not, he's one, of not one of the brothers. He's one of the the he's, Masterson. Oh, that's right. He's, he's bad Masterson. He's bad yeah. Masterson. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh... Day or I'm sorry, uh, Bert. Stronger sense of brotherhood. Um. I'd say Wyatt Earp. I mean, there's elements of it in Tombstone. You know, how they're backing each other up and it's like, come on, you got to join me or you got to do this with yeah. me. Um, but I think this is more developed in Wyatt yeah. Earp. Yeah, I, I, I'd say so. Um, Joe? I am going to go with Tombstone, actually, for this. Uh -oh. um, I, I think that in Tombstone, that even though there isn't as much time, that there's a better banter between the brothers... It seems like there's more chemistry be between them, um, whereas I think in Wyatt Earp we're told that they have a lot more connection than we're actually really shown. Like we're told, okay, they they're, they're going to do whatever Wyatt Earp says, and we're told that multiple times by the wives who blame Wyatt Earp for everything. But like we're not really shown like, hey, man, like I'm with you to the end. Like we can do this or anything that would kind of show that they're actually really connected to each other beyond like, okay, yeah, we're going to move to the same places and stuff like that. I feel like the connection that you get in tombstone is much better with the brothers than the kind of connection that you see over a much longer form in Wyatt Earp. If I would cut Wyatt Earp, I would still keep the stuff from civil war when he's a young kid and he hugs Michael Madsen and finds his brother on the, on the wagon. I think that's a strong scene. And does develop his his relationships to his brother, so I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, there's a lot of missteps in Costner's version. Um, you know, I was reading Michael Madsen uh, hated the movie, <laughs> and he says it's dumb. It's three hours of a close up on Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at, least, at least it wasn't of his ass. That's all we do. <laughs> well, that balding head isn't much better. I'm I'm looking like Kevin Costner. It's here, let me. This is this is Wyatt Earp. <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I think I think there is, to me. I I watch both movies. I, I I saw Wyatt Earp twice just to make sure I wasn't fooling myself, and I watched it, and I. Three, all three hours. I did second time around. I did fast forward all the sort of women parts, the women folk parts, which are I think a little boring. And Roseanne will get into that. Um, but I think overall, I really get a sense of camaraderie among the brothers in Wyatt Earp more than Tombstone. Um, okay, uh, so I already mentioned it. Roseanne, take us away. What's the problem with the women in both films? And I'd say Wyatt Earp comes off smelling like roses in comparison to Tombstone. Uh, I don't think either of them. Again, I, women, like, back to mythology, I was thinking about it, and I'm just like, okay, it, in Western mythology, I think men are still, like, uh, you know, uh, sky gods, right? Like, the theoretical, the promise, like, these kinds of things. And women at their best, um, in the best, you know, Western films I've ever seen, which, of course, are The Big Country and, and High Noon, women are the grounding force, right? They're, I mean, like whatever, big country, she literally, Julie Merrigan literally represents the river, you know, where their crops grow and all, from which all life springs, whatever. Um, I don't think either of the, I think both these films show how ill-defined the men are by the fact that these women are in no way a grounding force or in any way helping to define the nature of the male characters. Uh, and instead, they seem to either be in the way or just an afterthought. And and honestly, in in all films, of course, I would like women to be well-rounded characters in all films, but that's not going to happen. But the least they could do was make them seem like they're welcome presence if they're going to include them. And neither film does. And I think in a lot of ways, it's because... <laughs> it, what? And... There's no way you can tell me that the women in Wyatt Earp are in any way welcome. What are they doing? They are in di direct opposition to the goal of the film, which is freedom, 
So you've got these like rag asses who are constantly like getting in their way of blood and family and freedom. And then you don't even yeah, have but them they represent, like, they participants represent, in Tombstone. They represent the new families and they represent venturing off and breaking off from the family. And, and Wyatt Earp, of course, is in like he won't hear of it. Almost to his Again, de- almost to his detriment and to the destruction of the family. So women I think should in, in in westerns they should be representing the physical reality of what is worth defending and what is worth remaining free for, and that is not what they do in either of these films. Well, they're representing a, a sense of stability that Wyatt, Wyatt Earp won't have any of it. He wants that to strike resents, it rich, and yet yeah. he's. And yet, but in Wyatt Earp, it doesn't seem like it's because he wants to strike it rich. It just seems. No, what he is, says it. What he is his it. fight? He says it. He, you know, he's sick of working for people and he wants to make it rich. And he's not, you no, know, only they're, they're saying, hey, we got it good. Shut up. And he's saying, no, I want, I want bigger things. So he, they are an obstruction to uh, their freedom. Fair enough. Fair enough. But he's wrong because he never does make it big. So they right, probably but, should but have stayed in Dodge City. When you have two films where the hero is wrong, he is therefore then seen as right. And these women are either unimportant or villains. They are as much an obstruction to their freedom than theoretically okay, as the Clantons. But, but what's her face? Uh, I forgot her name suddenly. Horror number two. No, no. <laughs> the Dana Delaney, Joanna Going. Josie. What's, or, uh, Josie, what's Marcy. Josie, Josie Marcus. Josie. Yeah, Josie Marcus. Yeah. She it, is it, not. Is she is not an inhibitor. She's she's uh, she's enabling his freedom, and she doesn't register. She registers more in Wyatt Earp than she does as Dana Delaney does not. Re- Re- Dana no. Delaney registers as she, get off. Dana the screen, Delaney registers. You're embarrassing she's the just movie. Annoying. She's embarrassing. Yeah. She's yeah. she. I didn't realize it, but she's terrible. Like this time, I'm but like. But Joanna Goin. Joanna, Joanna Goin is this shrill, no, she's this shrill, wet kitten of a character who's like, yeah, don't go. Whereas the real Josie Marcos <laughs> would be like, mm. and then if he's alive afterwards, they would go. <laughs> well, maybe. She, she was essentially a carny, and in no way is that shown in either film. All right, we're, we're talking a, too much. She's, go, let's, yeah, let's somebody, so, let oh, somebody else sorry. talk. Alex, Bert, sorry. somebody jump in. You asked right, me. What, what, what? No, I already said. You don't know what the conversation is. All right, Dave, what do you think? Oh, he was looking my, at his phone. Get off my back. I was reading up on it. <laughs> I, I think you. I think I'm you guys. For ammunition. I think you covered it well. I mean, I, I, I think the women, like Roseanne brought up, they're not grounding. They're just, I don't know. I, it, yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to say on that. So. Thoughts, maybe go Joe. To mm-hmm. You look like you're bursting with with thought. Well, I mean, some, that. but oh. yeah, I know, right? It, leaving it up too much. Um, no, I, I agree. I think that it's, they are made into a sort of an obstruction. And it's, I think in some ways more egregious in Wyatt Earp only because it's constantly called attention to. Like, the unfortunate option in both of these movies is, do you want women who are going to be, like, really annoying and, like, block your way for everything? Or ones that are just a complete afterthought? Well, and Tombstone's like, an afterthought. Almost not really important at all. <laughs> Tombstone is the afterthought, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, so, you know, I would say neither of these movies are very good when it comes to portraying women. I, I do think that, I, I did prefer the actress who played Josie in Wyatt Earp yeah. um, over Dana Delaney. Um, I, I thought that Dana Delaney's was just, uh, I don't know, just a little bit too annoying I, in certain I, I ways. I can tell you, none of her scenes, <laughs> none of her scenes matter. Like I want them, yeah. I want them out of the movie. I, I would have cut them out as yeah. well for uh, out of anything else. Yeah. Um, and she has but, zero, she has zero chemistry with with uh, with uh, Kurt Russell. She has so, negative uh, chemistry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So at least you want a going seems like she has co- chemistry with Kevin Costner. <clears throat> yeah. It, it's just also kind of a shame, I think, that like. It, and this is one of the weaker points, I think, of Wyatt Earp, is that you have these two, at least two different examples of women who are basically, like, he tells them, basically, I'm emotionally unavailable. Like, I can't give you anything that you want. And they're still like, I can fix you. <laughs> you know? And it's, I mean, like, it's like, okay, this is an area where, like, if you wanted to make Wyatt Earp seem more complicated, maybe it's, 
I don't know, he's having an internal struggle of, like, oh, I do want to be close, but, like, and trying to make promises, but never really able to fulfill them or something. But instead, it's made into, like, these women are just really dumb. Like, they're throwing themselves at this guy who, like, they could go for, I guess, pretty much anybody else. Well, the Maddie but character... they're choosing him. The Maddie character is not served well in either film. And <laughs> if you... If I just dug into some history, and uh, it just seems like the story's much more interesting, period. For one thing, they're skipping a marriage. He married some child... He had a child bride, like a 15-year-old bride, after his first wife died. Yeah. So, and that was... And she was one of his prostitutes. So, uh... Classic. All of the both films suffer for just trying to make him better than he was. Like I just figure, why not address this? You can ha- again in the world of of you know I always complain about this, but in the Breaking Bad world of, I guess it was the '90s, so we just couldn't have that. They were still in Robert Redford mode, where mm-hmm. he just has to be perfect. Um, I, I guess it's just like, why wouldn't you tell the story of this guy who was kind of a shit heel? <laughs> you know, he, he pretty, pretty much ditched Maddie, what's her face, wherever. Like, yeah, he, he just left her. She just rotted and died. It's like a terrible story. So there's no way to hide behind that one. He was a guy who stood up for the law, except he was terrible to women. So I don't know. I don't know what if you're going to address that or not, but why bring it up then? Correct? Possible. Bert, yes. thoughts? Why bring it up? Well, I just... Uh, to me, um, in both movies, the women were just... I think kind of like Roseanne said, uh, like an afterthought. It's like, oh, we have to show them because they were there. Um, and But they're really not important to the story. You know, yeah, they were antagonistic toward to Wyatt, it, or apparently, at least in, in these movies. You know, you did this or you caused this. And, you know, if you think back and uh, uh, if you look back at what what it was really like in the Western times for women, they had to be pretty stinking tough just to even survive. Sure. Um, <laughs> and and then um, so, you you know, if you think about it, all those wives were pretty hardy. Yeah, and and uh, knew their way around things, whether it was guns or whatever they needed to do, they they did it. But you know, Plus they were whores. Yeah, and they were they were wealthy apparently, <laughs> or at least that's how it's portrayed. And why they're, mm. you know, they were you know, they were kind of wealthy, living high on the hog. So maybe they didn't have to do much work in Tombstone or, um, but you know, getting there. Um, they were certainly tough, but again, you know, we can't apply today's standards of uh, to this story of saying, well, we should have elevated the women and recognized, you know, how great they were. Well, the men still ruled the roost, good or bad. Um, to be clear, I don't want them to be elevated. I would have preferred if both sets of women were not in the film. Right, but I guess they have to in, tell in the story of, the, hey, they were... Hey, they were married. Right, they were yeah, there, you know, like you said. Yeah. You know, Historically, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so, I mean, I think that I think the teenage bride should have been in the movie, for sure, especially after his first wife dies of typhoid. So I think it should have been that... that well, yeah, it was long just, enough, you might as well have added one more. Well, for again, sure, and you could have you easily don't... put her in the, in the horse-thieving section of his life, and it would have been fine. Yeah, right. you don't need you don't need the Maddie character in either film because all she does is drag the story down. It just seems <laughs> okay. like you can't get like okay, he's a terrible guy in real life. He, he let this woman just basically die of a you know, basically a drug addiction. He just ditches her. So why bring it up then? You know, because in the mo- in each movie, it doesn't seem like it's either. It's like what's he doing? He's just leaving this poor woman. For this actress, it doesn't come off as good, and no so, one really challenges on him, challenges yeah. him on it, other than Doc Holliday a little bit. Yeah, you know, in the in Tombstone. Yeah, Tombstone, yeah, yeah, for sure. The rest of them well, just like, eh, but, it's just Wyatt. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, the well, problem I, is I, that's what I, he does. I, well, look, I have a question. You know, I <laughs> sure. mean, and maybe if they made the movie today. Now, I understand that Wyatt Earp was supposed to be originally was conceived as a six-hour miniseries. So yeah. maybe, I don't know. And maybe they would do that today. Uh, you know, and maybe give the Maddie story a little bit more uh, screen time. You know, fit yeah. it into the, the narrative. 
But uh, I think where they missed the boat in both cases, when you look at the, there is a, an existing photo of Maddie Blaylock, and she was what I would call flinty, if that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, she had a hard edge, and and wow. I would imagine if you go for that, she might have been a little bit more formidable, because yeah. maybe it was possible before the drugs took effect, you know, that she could go toe to toe with Wyatt Earp. There had to be something. Yeah. You know, because this follows on the heels of the child bride. And I understand, you know, in the movie we see him in jail that one time, the shame that he brings to his father. But I guess in real life, he spent a few times. A lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He got arrested to, a lot. Due to, yeah. For pimping. <laughs> Certain pimping, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Certain nocturnal activities. <laughs> we won't discuss right now. So, you know, there was something that drew him to that world. And uh, and maybe Maddie, because she was a little older, maybe it was like, you know, instead of, you know, with the what child bride. So do you like stuff? <laughs> you know, I, like, I, I like gum. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like long walks and yeah. <laughs> horse Maddie rides Maddie. out to the sunset. Drinking coffee endlessly. Yeah, where, <laughs> yeah, where Maddie might have had something. No, and I don't know why I can't. There, I don't know if anyone remembers Unforgiven, the, the Clint Eastwood movie. Sure, but one, sure. One of the prostitutes, the one that after they kill, you know, the, the Schofield kid kills the guy in the, the, the privy, and they're waiting for that girl to show up, the one that announces that uh, Morgan Freeman has been killed. She, I think her name is Tara Frederick, and it was like, God, if only they could have got her, because she just had that look. Hmm. You know, she did. She could have played Maddie. I don't know what her skills were like, but it was like, you know, I guess that's part I, of me. You know, that verisimilitude and like maybe it would have brought something more. I don't know. I, I just don't I think, I, think Wonder, both oh. I thought of those. Sorry. I but I brought it up to Gino even like I thought of the whores and Unforgiven. I was like, those ladies were a, a group of salty ladies. I they mean, were. Yeah, exactly. And they were and great. They had, and they had yeah. fire. You Francis know? I mean, Fisher was great. Yeah, I like. I like. Well, let's not get a performance yet. We won't, we won't uh, but but I do like. I do like Joe Beth Williams, and I like um, Catherine O'Hara. I think they do fine. I mean, what little they have for to work with. What they with, have. What, what little they have to work. They they still make their mark. Unlike the the basically the. The, the women in, in Tombstone look like three mannequins, you know? <laughs> when they're sitting there, they that look like the mannequins. Intent. Like, God, you can't tell one from the other. They, neither, none of them have a character. It's a, one of them's taking the laudanum, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know why they bring them in. Um, all right, well, let's get into the bad guys of the bunch. So, plus the, well, we're not talking performance yet, but just overall, I always remember Tombstone, at least the first time I saw it, as... Kind of disjointed, but great scene at the OK Corral where they had a, a really good gunfight. Who has the better gunfight? David Johnson. Uh, I'm going to go with Tombstone, especially at the OK Corral. I, I, I just liked it when they approached and they can tell it's about to go. You know, everything's going to blow. And Sam Elliott says, hold, this isn't what we want. You know, and they're just freezing there. And then. Val Kilmer, Doc Holliday, kind of lights the fire, and uh, uh, you know, I, I like I like that scene better. Joe, same. Yeah, I would say same, um, but it it's pretty close between two, the two of them in terms of the OK Corral scene. Yeah, I think if anything, Kevin Costner probably saw some storyboards back when he was involved because I think they're identical. I'll get into yeah. I'll get into why uh, late. I thought well, the same thing. It's like some of the scenes could just be interchangeable. They yeah, out, yeah. Well, I think they're okay. I'll I'll say it now in case I don't get a chance later. The reason why I like wider better now is because James Newton Howard's score is way better. It's just it's leaps and bounds better. So I know none of you listen to that sort of thing, but it's just much better. <laughs> so, um, Roseanne, gunfight at the OK Corral. Um, again, I'm with Dave. I think Val Kilmer's the difference maker in it because otherwise they are pretty much the same scene. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Bert? I like, is that... like that wink. Is that what you feel? <laughs> like the wink. I, I would agree with that because I really like Val, Val Kilmer, Kilmer's Doc Holliday. Huh. Um, but, but I, that's a, that's a tough one. I'm going to go but against I the grain. I do think they were inter interchangeable, so... I'm going to so, eh, give you I a precursor to performance, everybody. I, I like Dennis Quaid better now. I do. <laughs> I do. I like Dennis Quaid better. I think he gives a more 
human performance versus a sort of showy performance. Or comic book performance. Yeah, yeah. kind of. We're talking. The Western word you're myth. looking for is epic, mythological yeah. <laughs> and epic. Yeah, Western mythology. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and he's a dentist, you know. And yeah. Al Kilmer Dennis Quaid looks awesome. like Dennis I, Quaid looks like every de- he looks like you. Dennis Quaid looks salty <laughs> like you, Dave. Let mu- <laughs> clip that beard down to a th- handlebar, and you're Dennis Quaid. Yeah, but uh, but he's just not as cool as Val Kilmer, you know. Not as, he's not as cool, but he's more he, he's much more sickly. Yeah. Right between the word sickly and cool, I'm gonna go with cool. <laughs> he's still cool he's still very cool but he he plays it like anyway let's let me give alex his, his his word what uh yeah. what, do you, what do you think about the the gunfight who does a better job mm, to be honest i'm gonna give the edge to tombstone oh and here's my feeling it's they are identical it's almost as if um the wyatt earp version is the demo version like okay here we're gonna sketch it out and then when they've had some time to work on it, we get Tombstone. We get that version because it just has a little bit more energy that makes it, I, I think that draws you in even more. And, well, a lot of it has to be Val Kilmer and especially the wink he throws at Thomas Hayden Church. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it just, I, yeah, there, there's just a, a, a certain amount of energy in Tombstone that, Wyatt Earp just kind of didn't match. You know? I mean, that, uh, that's how I, I say, feel. I say I, it I makes gotta, up for it in sweep. In sweep? Well. Yeah. I, I, you the know. shots are a little cleaner. It's a little It's a little more fluid. I just think the movie as a whole is more fluid than, than Tombstone. Okay, well, I'm not gee, saying, but I, I'm saying that scene alone, though. No, I mean, I'm talking I think that's, about that scene. Oh, in Tombstone. I'm saying, I think that's in Tombstone, I think oh. it's a more fluid scene oh, than, it is. Than, okay, thank you. I'm, than, I'm, than Wyatt Earp. I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. Wyatt Earp is more fluid than Tombstone. Oh, Tombstone no, is still. I, like... I think the the cinematography in Wyatt Earp is just much better. No, but I Even, just think okay. the I think the shootout for for some reason the shootout I, just had a certain energy that I really liked. I, I get I mean, it. It's, That's it's why frenetic, I liked Tombstone it's crazy, the first time. It's yeah, chaotic. it's it's the why I liked um, it. But this time around, looking at the two, I think the better filmmaking goes to Wyatt Earp. So here's my problem with the opening scenes of Wyatt Earp and Gino. You should appreciate that. Mm-hmm. The hundreds of acres of perfectly lined cornfields that they're going through in the 1800s that's not right that, i thought the actually, same thing i'm like wow they really, were good at that rollers really, that wow. really bugged me. those tractors back in the 1800s they were doing a good job and right and then there, they had that perfectly just, groomed piece of dirt between yeah. two fields and it just I don't wow, know. Look at that. my opinion they were like feel the dreams going forever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not Agreed. possible. Yeah. So Fair sorry, enough. I had to bring Agreed. that up. No, no, <laughs> you're you're right. I it's, thought I was the only one. No, no, it's it's <laughs> I, it's not like I thought about it. I I mean I I just think of the whole motif as a little overdone for sure. The whole Gene Hackman motif and that point in the movie, I, I just wish it wasn't there um, because it's it doesn't add anything and it just seems. Oh, where's that crazy Wyatt Earp? You know, I, I want to sign up. No, I want to sign up, Pa. And it just seems like pure biopic movie bullshit. You know, well, so I don't think yeah. so much about the corn. Dave, I, I hear you. You're right. You know, anything uh, other than an acre in those days has to be like like a like a corporate farm, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, if you got more than an acre, like holy or ten, five acres is like you're sprawling ranch or farm, right? No, anyway. I Well that's a I, that's a Hollywood trip. I, 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 mean, I honestly do know. like the way Wyatt Earp begins and I wish it just sort of carries on from there. You know? Like with each step is an a memory. I don't know. That's like a Johnny Cash movie or something. But it just seems like I wish he didn't go into his childhood so much. But I do like the establishing brothers. I, I like the brother scene when when they come home and the, the affection they have for each other and the affection Gene Hackman has for them. So I, I'd almost start the movie there, honestly. Mm. Um, well, all right, so let's get into performance, the moment we've all been waiting for. So around the room... Oh, Bert, did you answer... Yeah, everybody answered gunfight. Yeah. So here we go. Who's the better Wyatt Earp? Alex. Costner. Roseanne. Russell. Dave. Russell. Bert. Costner. <laughs> Joe. 
<laughs> and I say Costner. So it's just three against three. <laughs> well, I think if me, Alex, and Bert were at the OK Corral, we'd shoot you down so fast. <laughs> hey, I looked the part. No, no, no. I, I would be, I'd be, I'd be the guy in the in the in the in the, in the mercantile shop shutting the curtains. <laughs> You would be getting the coffins ready to sell. <laughs> yeah, I got coffins for five ninety nine. All right, Doc Holiday. Here we go. This is probably a no brainer, but I'm gonna go first, and I say I like Dennis Quaid. I like Dennis Quaid. He's more organic. Go, Alex. Kilmer by uh, by Cuspid. Hmm. That's, I had to throw a dental term. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Here, I got that. So. Joe. <laughs> uh, Dennis Quaid. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I I liked. He actually felt like he was sick and not just well, acting he sick. Looks it, yeah. And like I believe that this is a person who's suffering from tuberculosis, and stumbling around and on the verge of dying, and also like his performance is much more like bitter and cutting. Like he knows he doesn't have long to live. Yeah. Rather than just sort of like I'm just gonna try and <laughs> mask my misery here, you know, and just kind of be a little bit suave about it. It just struck me as a little more interesting of a direction to take the character in. Hmm. Yeah, well, Val Kilmer's, I mean, that was a star-making performance for him, so most people love it. So, Dave, go! Hi, Val Kilmer. Roseanne. And I have street cred. Oh. I'm a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but never once, Dave, never once does he work on Wyatt Earp's teeth. Well, we don't know that. That may be in the We don't the, see it in either film. In the so sequel. We don't see it in either film. <laughs> Roseanne. That, was cut. that part was cut. Uh, Val Kilmer, and I also have street cred because I'm also sweating my ass off right now. So <laughs> I think. Bert. Uh, oh. No, nope, done. Bert. Uh, I think, as far as specifically saying performance, if you if I want to say who was more who took it well, not necessarily who took it more seriously. But who came across more seriously was Dennis Quaid. Um, the Val Kilmer um, was almost like comic relief, almost. Um, or there was an element of what I would call comic relief. I mean, a lot of his stuff has turned into memes nowadays. You know, it's a lot of the yeah, a lot of the the dialogue he used. Yeah, but uh, it's not that it was a bad performance. It was just different, and they portrayed the character slightly different. Dennis Quaid was a little darker. Um, you know, Val was just a little like, oh, "I'm gonna die. I'm gonna have fun." I, I don't know. I don't know how to put a finger on that, but yeah. well, Den I, but I, I agree, thought Dennis's it, Quaid performance was it's a showier performance for yeah, sure. Yeah, but I, I, but like, was, I think Dennis it was just Quaid different, was... and I like Dennis's better. So yes, yeah, and say let me just elaborate what I'm trying to say. The the um I, I think Val Kilmer is good, but almost stands on its own as his own little egg in the film. Where like yeah, it's a great part of the film and it's an entertaining part of the film, and it doesn't feel like he's in the rest of the movie with everybody else. Whereas Dennis Quaid is organically part of Kevin Costner's movie, and organically, you know, both films I think suffer from yeah, but not to the point where he disappears a little bit i would say by the end he's really not as much of a presence or as important and he kind of right, shows but, up as an afterthought i don't and I like, like this, Dennis Quaid's i don't like the scene i don't like the scene in the sanatorium in tombstone i think it's just sort of like it a, it's a hollywood postscript it's all bullshit you know i agree and i don't think it, it says anything so i i just but that's not indicative of val kilmer's performance no I mean, that's it's not part of the, but i i think dennis movie. quaid's his presence is still in in service to the story more than Val Kilmer's is. I think that's true, but that's why I say like the high school senior in the high, in you know in a basketball game because I'm like Val Kilmer is definitely that guy where you do just want to watch him. And if we're talking about cinema, his character is the one I want to be around. Hmm. And, and I I, I like them both, time. but I, yeah, I think Dennis Quaid fits in with the group. I mean, so do I. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's. The big, the big one we've opinion? all been dying about. What has everybody got a chance to weigh in? The it's one we've good. all been dying to weigh in on is who does? Who's the better Virgil, Michael Madsen or Sam Elliott? Dave, you got the Sam Elliott beard. Uh, I'm going with Sam Elliott. <laughs> I, I, for me, I just like. I mean, it's Sam Elliott. I like, love Sam Elliott, and 
I cared about his character, whereas Virgil and the other one, I in Wyatt Earp, I just could care less. Hmm. Good. Good. Good points. Joe. Sam Elliott. Yeah, you can't ignore like, that. By a must- mile. You just can't ignore that mustache <laughs> and that voice. Even I, I can't go Michael Madsen. I, I, but I, I think as I like far as the idea of him. I, I think four brothers. I like the. I do like the idea of the four Earp brothers in Costner's movie better than in fact james doesn't get any mention in uh tombstone uh bert samuel or michael madsen uh sam elliott yeah i mean he's like the epitome of cowboy (laughs) and he's great in that movie too he's yeah oh oh, yeah yeah no totally believable too yeah roseanne elliott sam elliott forever alex (laughs) Sam Elliott, because he was probably not bitter and sober. <laughs> did we finish on, did everybody weigh in on Wyatt Earp? Did we, did everybody's opinion, because I started it and then we stopped, didn't we? Did we all say who we thought, I guess it was a, a, a given. I think it's three or three. It's three. Yeah, that's yeah it was three and three. Yeah, well, three. All right, well, okay, three, three. all right. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, all right, let's go with um, Curly Bill. Go, Alex. It's it's Powers Birth Booth versus, versus Jeff Fade. Perfect Tommy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't shake. All right. No, no. Just, that's right. Lewis Smith. Right. Lewis right, right. Smith. I just, yeah, yeah. Just without the blonde hair. Uh, I'm going to give it to Powers Booth because it is the, you know, as Roseanne would say, it was the more epic performance. And just, you know, that voice of Powers Booth. I mean, you just... Don't get any better than that, you know. Yeah, his I mean, is definitely he, right up there with Sam Elliott's. Oh, yeah, it's it just, sure. you know, when he the the whole tripping scene, like I'm feeling just capital, you know. <laughs> I wish I could do that justice. Um, you know, I will say, Lewis Smith had more of a kind of that, like a feral quality that was interesting, but he, he didn't have the presence that Powers Booth brought. And I would yeah. think you would want that because it seems Curly Bo- Bill Brocious was such a huge part of this story, killing the sheriff and I guess sort of the faux leader of this gang. I mean, yeah. I guess there was old man Clanton that neither story touches on. Right. And I guess the other fact that the Clanton ranch was quite successful from what I hear. Yeah. I mean, it really was. They were probably more successful than the Earps were ever going to be. Right. So you kind of wonder yeah. if there was some jealousy there. Like, well, these guys, they got the spread. They got the best food. They got the best horses. They got the best whores. Yeah, they you know? both both movies <laughs> I mean, sort of crazy. set them up as scumbags. But I was reading about that that they were a very no, successful very ranch. Successful. So it was almost like, you know, in these Vale stories. I we won't name names, but you know, we're we're dealing with the sort of big ranchers and big farmers who sort of own the town. I think it was that there was more of that going on. So yeah. it was actually more of an act of rebellion like, on the Earps for, for part that both movies gloss over. You know, they just make it seem like they're scalawags and yeah. well, but th- but then again, they were part of the cowboys, the the they the were. Clantons. <clears throat> yeah. So they they were part of this thieving, murdering gang. I mean, I think Wyatt Earp goes a little closer because of their alliance with uh, Johnny Bayan, but yeah, that's about it. You know, they don't go far enough. It's like yeah, I would well, like to see and, more. And it's interesting, line for line. That's where it is. The the fight is sort of like scene for scene because Behan says the same thing in Tombstone, which yeah. I never noticed until now. That he says, I've, I've, I've taken away their weapons. That must have been some historical line. Some, there had to because be, yeah. he says, they're not, they're not carrying her. I've making, made sure of it. And they're like, yeah, whatever. So anyway. Yeah. Um, so anyway. All right. Well, uh, do, we wanna com- do you want to compare any women? Oh, Curly. Oh, Curly. Uh, yeah, Curly Bill. Uh, oh, no, for one thing, saying. Johnny Ringo. Johnny Ringo does not play in White Earp. He's nowhere he to be found. Bre- no, he did. He's he in there. Bre- yeah, I know. He's like, Briefly. He's a walk on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just get to hear his name and then he dies. Right. So we get a, s- a little nod to Michael Bean's Michael Bean second best part. Own that thing. And I bet everybody himself. thinks this first best part is Terminator. And I'm going to say, not a chance. <laughs> no, he's. It's The I Abyss. It's... The Abyss. Oh, okay. okay. I, the I abyss. love him in The Abyss. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about Oh, you, that. what are you going to say? Navy SEALs? Aliens? All right, aliens. aliens is great. <laughs> right, right. Hog <clears throat> Wild, his first movie. <laughs> Do you guys know what I'm talking about? 
I only know because I read it in his filmography. Uh, yeah. No, the old guys riding their motorcycles that hog wild. No, 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 no. That's no, wild hogs. Hog, hog oh, wild, wild hogs. which came out in the late seventies. It was sort of a Canadian um, attempt at like Animal House in a way. And Tony Rosado played the John. All right, Belushi all right, character. here we anyway, go. Anyway, that just going. So let's go. <laughs> that goes right into the cutting bin. Alex I don't was expounding care. on a '70s I don't movie. Care. <laughs> it's all I have in this world. <laughs> okay, uh, so special mention to Michael Bean. Any any other characters you want to compare? Uh, Are we going to compare uh, uh, Ike, Dana Delaney versus Joanna Ike, Going? Ike Clanton. I think we should talk about oh, Ike Clanton. So Jeff you Faye got, versus Stephen Lang. Yeah. Ah, they're both weasels. <laughs> but still, who was the better weasel? All right, Jeff go. Jeff Fahey. Jeff Fahey? I'm going to give it to Stephen Lang I, as the better weasel. Uh, Bert, I, did you think I, about this much? Who played the better weasel? Stephen Lang well, or Jeff Fahey? I, I would say the Fahey guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. To me, a lot of Tombstone... Comparing the two is like reading a, um, I can't think of the word, the, the long comic book um, with colored pictures. Like, I can't remember what they call those. Graphic, graphic novel. novel. Yeah, graphic novel. Like, Tombstone's a graphic novel. Um, and and then Wyatt Earp's the, the, the novel, book. I the guess. Book. The book. Yeah, yeah but like a novel <laughs> written by James Michener. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool, though hear his voice i i <laughs> or not missioner the robert Mitchum. The, robert, Mitchum. Robert, Mitchum. robert Mitchum. that guy at the beginning that was interesting i, I think that's a very yeah. insightful analysis but i agree yeah. with you on that tombstone's the sort yeah. of comic booky version of it and white herb is the ponderous boring novel yeah. <laughs> but it, it it i can in the world of cinema it's just a more, co more cohesive film that's all i'm saying all right, uh, I don't think we need to compare women, but we are going to compare film scores. Did anybody notice Bruce Broughton versus James Newton Howard? Mm -hmm. Joe yes. Field, did you even notice the music? Do you listen to music in, in films? <laughs> Do you think about it? Sometimes, sure. Okay. Uh, I, I definitely noticed the music more in Wyatt Earp. Um, it had that kind of very, I don't know, 90s orchestra, big movie quality to it. I don't really know how else to say it except probably is that um, James Newton Howard kind of t typical score. Um, I didn't really notice as much the the soundtrack in Tombstone. Um, so, I mean, like, I think that if we're talking about whether or not this is something you would listen to on your own, I would at least probably recognize the music from Wyatt Earp more so than Tombstone. Yeah. But I didn't... I wasn't, like, a huge... I'm not going to be looking up them up later after this or anything sure, like sure. that. But well, as a James Newton Howard fan, I had I sort of overlooked it, and it is a really good score. Um, and it it it's in the language, not so much a, I'd say '90s symphony, but it sounds like Aaron Copland, which is the sort of granddaddy of all Western American Western music. So everything we attribute to Western music is comes from Aaron Copland. Um, and it sounds, it's in that vein, and I think it's good, whereas Bruce Broughton is just sort of generic. It's just a very generic score, and I don't think it, it does anything for the movie. Whereas at least James Newton Howard, if you're noticing, has a distinctly beautiful string passage for Gene Hackman. So anytime this, the sort of decisions of the father come into Wyatt Earp's actions, you hear that theme, which I... Again, didn't notice back in 94 because I was too busy trying to fight off sleep. But anyway, mm. Bert, any thoughts? No, if I had to listen, if I had to watch it a second time, I would have paid attention to that. But I was trying to, I don't know, I was paying attention to other things and just didn't notice. Um, okay. Enough to really say. But, I didn't but think I didn't about really it in 94, I'll tell you that things, much. And so. even in 94, I was collecting film yeah. scores. So it didn't, yeah. it didn't register then. I just didn't care. But now I, I've. I'm like, ah, eh, carries a lot of the movie. Okay, finally, uh, direction. Ka Lawrence Kazin versus Kurt Russell, John Cosmatos, and Kevin Jarre. And apparently Kevin Jarre's footage never saw the light of day, so I'd be very curious as to what that, like, if it's that bad that they couldn't even use it. I just wonder, <laughs> he was a writer, and I guess he just had no clue 
what a film is supposed to look like. <laughs> Why are you focusing on Wyatt's feet during this gunfight? <laughs> I want to show the symbolism of how we're trod upon by the Wyatt man. There seem to be a lot of shots of this flower in this pot. <laughs> All right. How direction, Dave? You like Tombstone? You think the direction is better than Wyatt Earp? Um, well, since I like Tombstone better, I guess I have to say the yeah. direction is better yeah. than Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp, I mean, it was long, and there mm. were some pretty, like you said, they could cut an hour out of that. It was just too long. And, well, uh, again, why why would we have the Masterson details? I don't know why, you know, the Bat Masterson yeah. and those guys. I mean, I don't know why we spent so much time with them. The buffalo hunting, all that, all the dumb animals. Oh, geez, like, why are we... It's. I guess they hired Bill Pullman and they didn't want to cut him out. I get it, but you don't need that for sure. Yeah, uh, overall... I, mean, I guess I like the graphic novel version of the uh, story <laughs> than the novel... You know, and I love, yeah. I love, you know, novels, but that movie, I mean, let me read it, not watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Joe, direction. Um, you know, I, I think that looking at both of these, Tombstone is kind of sloppy, but fun. And uh, Wyatt Earp is at least consistent and polished, but not particularly interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go with sloppy and fun. Um, you know, just like and, Maddie. And, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, who did the better job first? Stop, up, Roseanne. Who did the better job directing a western? Shoot 'em up. Um, again, I this is no new territory. But even Alex said that the OK Corral and Tombstone had more energy, or at least an energy. I'm like, spazzy and uh kind of frenetic as it was i like tombstone's energy better um and again lawrence kasdan is fine but i i really do feel like it's kevin costner's film and i feel like it's a kevin costner misfire so i'm gonna go with tombstone all right alex thoughts uh although i do agree with roseanne about the spazzy quality and tombstone has a lot of it and i think that's part of its appeal but I'm going to take the Gino Caputi route saying, you know, cinema for the love of cinema, true cinema. Lawrence Kasdan delivered more of a, a cinematic experience. It did have that big epic feel. Bert? Well, if it's based on which one I thought was better, or that I, even though I liked them both, if I have to pick one, um, it, it's the same one I said at the beginning, wider. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that's repetitive. I will say that Wyatt Earp, while technically better, and I like it better just as a flowing story, it is a failure on Costner and Lawrence Kasdan's part to turn in a movie that bloated. Like, that that just seems like a rush. It's like they didn't, they didn't play it before enough people to decide, boy, this is boring. <laughs> and again, even I'm at the end of the movie, when they re, we go back to the past with the, the kid who's whose uncle was, was going to be oh hard and feathered. That, you're like, what oh, are yeah. you doing? Who in the, the right mind would put that at the end? We, we're done with this movie. So I that, could have just been, that, could have, that could have just been narrated, and they all lived happily ever after. You know? No, but whoever's editing it goes, has got to go, hey, Larry, 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 this is terrible. We, we can't yeah. put, the audience is squirming in their seats. You cannot put the scene in the movie. Yeah, the story's over. Yeah. That, yeah. Was too much of a, that was too much of a Babe Ruth. Moment, yeah, you know, no, that really was Mr. No, Ruth. No, Mr. And, Ruth, and I think yeah. this, that's probably Kevin Costner because he likes a long movie and he's probably like, Hey, shut up, I just won best director for the longest movie ever. And so he's thinking mm -hmm. Dance with Wolves, but it's not the same. He he doesn't have that momentum, you know, there's just no momentum for scenes like that. And again, the Bill Pullman, Masterson, cut out, cut out, look, sorry, Mayor Winningham. We love you, baby, but you don't work <laughs> out. You know, there's a lot of things that cut out in that movie. and that, So I think that's a failure, but that's a failure on everybody's part. The director, the producer, the editors, everybody should have been like, this movie can't be this long. It just doesn't warrant it. So I will agree with all that, it, I, but I still like a lot of the, the movie. It, as a, like as I said, it's a, a more fluid movie than Tombstone. Whereas Tombstone, I'm just, I can't even believe I even gave it a, like, 
way back when, I was like, yeah, it was pretty good. It's like, eh, <laughs> this is just a crazy spaz movie. Just, well, uh, you know, it's, it's a Frankenstein movie. It's just three different directors and it shows. <clears throat> well, I was, you know, comparing Wyatt or three hours, like, I wanted it to be done. Yeah. But, like, Doom 2 was a movie I didn't want to end. Sure. You know, and that's a great movie. This is like, would I ever watch it again? No, I won't. Yeah. I won't. I won't watch it. It's just too long and not interesting. Well, I thrill to the move, the music, and the the pictures together. So I will watch scenes, but I I doubt I'll ever watch the Mayor Winningham scenes ever in my life because I, I just found them tedious. <laughs> you know, and again, she doesn't serve any purpose. So as we covered, it's like she's not. It's neither here nor there. She's just a drag. Like. <laughs> Get out of my way, you drag! <laughs> you know that's all she is. So anyway, all right. That's how I. Recommend? That's how I felt about the the drag. I thought was in Tombstone was the horse scene. You know where they're off, where he goes and meets the actress lady. Uh, oh yeah, in for the sure. woods. And I'm like, well, gee, for I've sure. seen this before in Star Trek. <laughs> Boy, and I was I went through this whole podcast without mentioning Star Trek. I was going to yeah. say it had to be said. It, had to be said. it, it was there. there you go. It was there. Yes. All right. Yay. So, real quick, would you recommend both films? Anybody would recommend both films? I would. Well, no, I would recommend wider. Who would recommend them both? Anyone? I would. Okay, Bert, you recommend. I them like both. them both. Okay, cool. And you own them. You both. You own copies of both. Yeah. Right yeah. on. All right, nobody else? Nobody else? Not even to the most Western-loving family members you know? <laughs> no? Shaking heads, all right. Not well, even to those Vail people? I, that's a tough thing. <laughs> that's a tough thing. Hey, I didn't see... I, who saw Wyatt Earp and Vail? I saw Tombstone and Vail, and I barely got a seat in the front row. It was packed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <clears throat> nope. Never seen a movie in Vail. <laughs> oh, well, you've missed out. I've seen you it. have. <laughs> Yeah, the right. Ontario did, did or nothing. Saint, did, so, uh, New Plymouth that didn't have a, a theater. Oh heavens no! They uh, had like five bars, uh, and seven <laughs> churches, or something like that. Uh, plenty of entertainment there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for participating. People, this is gonna be a very controversial episode. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of down votes because people won't believe that I don't like Tombstone that much. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for taking part. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, Rumble, Facebook, blah, 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 all that bullshit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Thank you for listening to Fabulous Film and Friends. Copyright 2024, a Bel Air Films production.